the countdown is on to commercial space travel. That's right, commercial space travel. It's a, uh, later today, Virgin Galactic founder Sir Richard Branson will unveil the world's first commercial manned space aircraft. This has a lot of people very excited. There are 300 tourists who have already booked a ticket for $200,000 a pop. And joining us now live from the Mojave Desert this morning is Sir Richard Branson. Great to talk to you again. Thanks for being on our show this morning. So there it is behind you. Tell us, <laughs> tell us what that is and why everyone is so excited. Well, um, first of all, it's great to be talking to you. Um, uh, <laughs> CNN is the very, very first people to have a, a glimpse of the spaceship. Um, the official unveiling is later today with uh, Governor Schwarzenegger and Governor Bill Richardson. Um, but basically, don't tell anybody, but there, but there she is. Um, you know, we'd already built the White Knight, which is the, which is the very big craft you see behind. And the, the spaceship now is settled uh, beautifully in the, in the middle, of, middle of White Knight. And, and, uh, and that is the spaceship that hopefully uh, you and me and others will go up into space with um, over, over the next 18 months or so. All right, so explain a little bit about this thing. It can carry six space tourists and two pilots. Where, how far would it go? How high up would it go? What would they be looking at for this, for this flight? Well, what happens uh, is that the... Um, six, um, p p six potential astronauts will be sitting in the uh, central uh, pod here, which is the, which is the spacecraft. Um, and uh, the White Knight will take them up to about 60,000 feet. Um, at 60,000 feet, uh, they will drop away. Uh, and they will then go from naught to 2,500 miles an hour in 10 seconds, um, where they get propelled into space. And once they're in space... Uh, they'll uh, unbuckle their seats. Uh, we've got, as you can see, these enormous windows, uh, which no spacecraft has ever had before, um, for them to look back at the Earth. Um, and uh, they can float around, um, and they can become astronauts. And, um, and uh, when they're ready to come back into the Earth's atmosphere again, uh, they'll pull themselves back into the seats, they'll buckle in, um, and they'll begin their voyage back, in, back into the Earth's atmosphere. And... At that stage, the spaceship uh, turns into effectively a giant shuttlecock. Um, that was the, the genius of Bert Rutar, the, the engineer behind it. And so it literally feathers its way back into the Earth's atmosphere. So it doesn't have the enormous heat buildup that some of the NASA spaceships have had in the past. So as I understand it, the next thing that has to happen is testing. And I would assume that the testing has to be extensive. Could you sort of tell us how much has to be done to make this project uh, happen? Well, the technology is based on Spaceship One, um, which has been into space on three different occasions. So it's not brand new technology. It's just a much, a much, much larger version of Spaceship One, uh, much, much more customer orientated. Um, <coughs> but um, as you say, we, we, we will do extensive testing. I mean, it'll be about 18 months of testing. Um, and then, at the end of that, um, myself and my children, Holly and Sam, and my parents, um, uh, even Ted, um, actually that's my mum <laughs> on, on the slightly younger version of my mum on, on the side of the spaceship, uh, uh, Eve, um, and Bert Rutar, uh, the, the engineer, will we'll do the first flight. And, um, and it was, it was Bill Richardson's built a, uh, building a beautiful spaceport in New Mexico. Um, I mean, it's... Um, stunning spaceport right out in the desert. Um, <coughs> sorry. And that's, and that's where the flights will take place from. Wow, that is amazing. It's a family affair. You guys are uh, going to hopefully bring a video camera with you if you can so you can chronicle some of that. Uh, the other interesting thing is where it goes from here. I mean, right now, as we've talked about, you need a lot of money and uh, you, you need to have a little bit of daredevil in you to want to do this. And there are a lot of people that do, as we said, uh, millions of dollars, uh, $40 million already in deposits to guarantee some sort of uh, trip on this once you guys are doing this. But what about the prospect then moving forward of just shrinking the amount of time it takes to get across the world? I mean, New York to Tokyo someday in three hours. Uh, that seems amazing. Well, we, we, would, we would love um, at some, some stage, obviously subject, subject to government approval, to, to take our engineers and start looking at, uh, at, at shrinking the world. So maybe, um, you know, we're, we're in, in close to Los Angeles here, Los Angeles to uh, Australia and maybe a couple of hours. 
Um, uh, but that's for the future, um, and, and, and uh, hopefully we can get, see something magical like that in our lifetime. But uh, for now, what we want to be able to do is try to bring space travel down to a price range where literally uh, hundreds of thousands of people will be able to experience space uh, that have never dreamt that they'd have the opportunity in the past. Certainly looking forward to that day, Sir Richard Branson. Thanks so much for coming aboard and talking to us about this a little bit. Thanks for being the first to share it with. Well, we're happy about that, and you must be very proud as well. Good luck with all the testing and with the new adventure. Sir Richard Branson, thanks.